Hello and welcome to a video on Nature of the Roots Part 2, brought to you by the Answer Series. I want you to do some examples. Without solving for x, I want you to determine the nature of the roots in the following examples. So remember at the end of the last video, we looked at whether the roots were real or non-real, rational or irrational, equal or or unequal. So pause the video, try these four examples, and then we'll look at them together. They said without solving the equation. So all I need to do is I need to look at delta. And remember delta is b squared minus 4ac. If I work out delta in the first example, I get that delta is minus 19. And then remember that list that we went through. Is delta greater than or equal to naught, or is it less than naught? It's less than naught, which means my roots are non-real. 2.2, the first thing I do is I write the equation in standard form, and then I work out delta, and I get delta to be 25. 25 is positive, so my roots are real. 25 is a perfect square, so they are rational. 25 is not equal to zero, so the roots are unequal. 2.3, again, I put the equation into standard form so that I can get my a, b, and c values, and I work out delta to be 24. 24 is positive, so the roots are real. 24 is not a perfect square, so the roots are irrational. And 24 is not equal to zero, so the roots are unequal. 2.4, again, I write my equation in standard form and I get that delta equals zero. Remember, if delta was greater than or equal to zero, the roots are real. Zero is a perfect square, so the roots are rational. And delta is equal to zero, which means my roots are equal. Example number three says to you determine the value of k if f of x is a tangent to g of x. Now, there are two ways to do this. You can either use nature of roots or you can use calculus. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this in both ways, and then we'll look at the two different ways together. g of x is a parabola, which I've drawn, and f of x is a straight line, which I've also drawn. If it must be a tangent, it means it must touch once. So you want to know that these two graphs touch at one point. So what I do is I take the two equations and I make them equal to each other. I then write this in standard form. I'm now going to work out delta. My a value is the coefficient of the x squared term b is the coefficient of the x term, and c is every term without an x. So I substitute those values into delta, and I get that delta is equal to 21 plus 4k. Now, a quadratic equation has two solutions. However, for these two graphs to be tangents to each other, I can only get one solution. How do I get one solution from a quadratic equation? Well, the only way I can get one solution is if the roots are equal. And if the roots are equal, what do I know? I know that delta is equal to zero. So what I do is I take delta, which I've just worked out, and I make it equal to zero, and I get my value for k. So there I've worked out k using nature of roots. The second method using calculus, what I do is I know that at the point of contact, the gradient of these two graphs must be the same. And remember, gradient is the same as the derivative. And if you don't remember derivatives, I suggest you watch the videos on calculus. So I get the derivative of f of x, which is 1. The derivative of g of x is 2x minus 2. And I make the two derivatives equal because at the point of contact, the gradients are equal. 
I solve for x. So at the point of intersection, my x value is 3 over 2. I then take that x value and I substitute into g, the parabola, and I get that the y value is minus 15 over 4. So the point of intersection is given there. I then take this point of intersection and I substitute it into f of x. So in place of f of x, or y, is minus 15 over 4, and in place of x is 3 over 2. Solve for k and you get exactly the same answer. Example number 4. In 4.1 I say, what can you say about the nature of the roots of this equation, where d and e are rational numbers. Now, that's not important to your calculation. The only thing that it is important with is when you get delta, it means that d and e have to be rational numbers. So don't think of what happens if d and e are different numbers, what happens if they're non-real, what happens if they're irrational. So just do your calculation, the D and E being rational numbers are there just to make it mathematically correct. And 4.2 says to you find the values of P if this equation has non-real roots. So I want you to pause the video, I want you to try these two and then we'll look at them together. The first thing I do in 4.1 is I write my equation in standard form. a is the coefficient of any x squared term. b is the coefficient of any x term. And c is any constant. I then get delta, which is b squared minus 4ac. I multiply the brackets. I change the order so that it's written as a quadratic and I then factorize and that can be written as e minus 2d all squared. I then go through my checklist. Is delta greater than or equal to naught or is it less than naught? Well a bracket squared if e and d are both rational numbers is always going to be greater than or equal to naught. So my roots are real. Is this a perfect square? Yes, it is, because I've got a square there, so my roots are rational. Is this equal to zero? Well, now I've just got to be careful. If e and 2d are equal, then delta is equal to zero. So if e is equal to 2d, then my roots will be equal. However, if e is not equal to 2d, then my roots will be unequal. The first thing I do is write my equation in standard form. a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is every term that doesn't have an x in it. I work out delta, which is b squared minus 4ac, and I simplify. For non-real roots, I know that delta has to be less than zero. So I take what I've worked out for delta and I make it less than zero. Factorize the trinomial. That is a quadratic. It's a parabola with arms that go up. My zeros are minus 2 and 6. Where is this less than zero? It's less than zero there. Which means that p must be greater than minus 2, less than 6. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.